Vanakam, Sadravu, Anyang Haseo, and Maten Mane. Hi, it's Tom from Green Shorts, and today I'm making this. It's coming out the top. Woohoo! That's right, it's a massive adobe rocket stove. It's taller than me, and I'm gonna use it to fire these adobe bricks so I can use them in my greenhouse reconstruction. I'm gonna gather some materials and get started. As luck would have it, Hurricane Zeta blew through Atlanta last night and dropped some bigger chunks of wood from this tree. A lot of the wood I get from my rocket stoves comes from this oak tree and that one. I've also been saving a lot of these cutoffs and different pieces of lumber that were probably past their prime. And I'm gonna use this for fuel for the rocket stove as well. And of course, here's my greenhouse project, which is in massive disrepair. And I'm gonna to totally rework this greenhouse. I'm gonna be using the adobe blocks for a front and side wall here. And then I'm gonna be using a, a new product called Tink Tube to build a steel frame that will hold the plastic roofing. Stay tuned for that. Got a couple buckets of creek sand here. I'm gonna use that as a base to level out the area in my backyard where I'm gonna make this. Because I want the flames coming out of the top of this a good bit, the center of my backyard was the only safe place I could do this. This of course will be a, a temporary location since I'll be disassembling this. I'm not so worried about the greenery here getting burnt, although I'm gonna put a layer of sand down here first. This backyard has kinda of gone to the weeds. Second material I'm gonna use is some wood shavings from my dad's shop. I've been saving this bag. I'm gonna use this in between the blocks to level them since they're a little bit uneven. For the fuel grate and to support the arch on the stove, I'm going to use some salvaged oven racks. My backyard is actually soaked right now, which is the perfect time to make a fire. So my blocks had been protected from the rain, but the hurricane sort of did some damage to that, but they look to still be pretty dry. So. Of course, this is the first batch I made in the video about making adobe, and I've made a couple other batches since then. This last batch is still a little bit soft, so I'm gonna use that in the section of the stove that's, that will take on the least amount of load bearing so they don't crumble and see what happens if these things get wet or rained on during the process, they kind of erode away. So hopefully I'll be able to salvage those. So I have mostly full size bricks like this, but I have some half bricks too. I'm gonna start by staging my adobe bricks closer to the build. Trains here. All right, these are the last of my dried bricks. I'll use the ones that still have a little bit of moisture in them carefully and in specific spots where I know they're not gonna get messed up. All right, let's start with the build. I'm gonna start my base three blocks wide and three blocks deep, and then I'll build up the sides. center portion here is going to be the fire tunnel and then I'll build up the sides here with full blocks.
I'm going to use the lack of uniformity in some of these bricks to help level this stove. I decided here in the middle to conserve bricks that I'm actually going to take out this lowest level and let ash just sit right on the ground. So this will be the level that my first grate goes in, the fuel grate. For the back wall of the stove, I'm going to start out with a bit of a buttress. So it's being wider than it needs to be. And as I move up higher, I'll start using the half bricks there. But for now, I'm just going to slide this block out the back halfway, and that will be the dimension of the riser. I am going to use some loose soil in this area to stabilize. Keeping an eye out for any earthworms, because they didn't sign up for this. I'm also going to make sure at this point that I'm 100% level. For this next level, I'm gonna bring in the fresh blocks. Yeah, these are <laughs> still pretty soft. Let's see how they do. I do like how they'll lock together nicely with the dry stuff. Alright, so I'm running out of blocks, so what I think I'm going to do is go ahead and cap the, the fire tunnel at this level. So I'm going to pull these off, put the grate on, and then cover it back to here. So here are the dimensions of the riser. And with my half block here, I'm gonna need to put a little bit of clay in there to kind of seal that off. And then we'll go up with the riser. So this is actually the native soil here in Georgia. It's red clay. And once you go down past the topsoil, that's what you're working with. So a great building material. It's the clay component of my cob mixture. Thank you. 
this was one of my blocks that got rained on and it's amazing how this side is still pretty firm and dry and this side's super brittle soft so if I can keep that together while it dries out with this rocket stove then perhaps I can salvage this as a building block All right, so I actually was able to use all of the blocks that I made, even the ones that were still a little bit damp. We'll see how they do with the heat. My initial plan was to have this thing be about eight feet tall, and you can see I didn't quite get there. It's like it's more like three and a half, but I'll take it. I am going to go grab a piece of chimney flue pipe, which is just about the perfect size to fit on top of that. That'll give me extra height than the riser to increase the draw. The food pipe is just a little bigger than my opening here, so I'm gonna stabilize that with some clay and taper it off just a little bit so it fits right. I'm gonna check the fit of my food pipe. All right, so this is a little rickety, <laughs> but it's going to be temporary. So one further safety precaution, because I don't want this to tip over in the middle of the burn, that's for sure, is I'm gonna put a couple of pieces of rebar down into the ground to support these two half brick sides of the chimney. Then I'll sit my flue pipe over top of that and seal it off. Now seal off these gaps with the clay. All right, so it's almost as tall as me. It's getting dark, so let's fire this thing up. Although I timed it that way because I think this thing's gonna look epic in the dark. All this stuff got hit by a hurricane last night, so it's wet. This, however, is some dry oak. That'll help get things going. Yeah, the wood's just too wet. Plan B. All right, I'm having a, a moment of regret here. And if I did this again, and I can't undo it now, I would do the fuel grate after two bricks versus three, and then, then have three bricks for fuel. I think that would have worked out a little bit better. All right, let's keep this fire going. I also need to push it further back. 
so it doesn't burn out the front. I stack some of the wet stuff in the bottom so the heat will bake the moisture out. Since my fuel grate was too high, I decided I was gonna try and start a fire on the bottom level as well. It sort of happened organically. The wood that I had in there to dry got hot enough to ignite. Nice rocket going. It's a full moon tonight and the remnants of Hurricane Zeta, or at least the wind is pushing through. All right, I'm gonna let this die down and I'll burn it again tomorrow. So it's the next day, and the last thing I did last night was put my extra block on top. One thing I was concerned about with this flue pipe is that it's just vitrified. So it's not ceramic, it's more like glass, and as you can see, it cracked in a couple spots. In fact, I could see the light through it last night You can see this fairly damp block dried out a little bit here. These two that also had about the same amount of moisture, this one dried back to about here. These are still definitely firmed up from where it was yesterday. This was still spongy. It is rigid now. I know I said that if I did this again, I would lower the grate. So actually what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reconfigure this. One, I'm gonna make the fire tunnel only one block out instead of two. Then I'm gonna use these blocks from that portion to go higher with my riser. As the blocks dried and shrunk, those gaps opened up. So I'm gonna tighten this up a little bit, go higher, put that back on, and then I'm gonna fire up again. I'm also gonna lower my grate down to two blocks high instead of three and give myself more space above the fuel grate. Here's something interesting, even with the super intense heat coming up the chimney, the wood chips only burned back about an inch or so, a little bit more toward these edges, but the heat had a way to get through that gap. my broken block here, these two notches to fit right in there. And where I can, I'm putting the unfired portion of the block inside so we can get temperatures on that. This one I can't because I got the notch in it. it. Would mess with the flue connection up here. So it's not rocket science, it's rocket stove science. I'm not gonna be too worried about the kind of the porousness of these corners. If the heat comes out a little bit this way, it's actually just gonna 
cook the block a little bit more in that direction. So, so I see that as a benefit. If this were a permanent installation, of course, I'd be really sealing this up well. This is the part that reminds me of being a kid. Now it is taller than me. I'm 5'7 on a good day. So we'll call it six feet. Not quite eight, but this'll do just fine. Train's here. Let's light it up. That's the sound I wanted to hear. closer to the top than I thought. So just about a foot below. Maybe it is possible. Ooh, that crack is getting big. Through the corner here, you can see how high the fire is getting. At least until it passes into the flue pipe. And I'm actually seeing some horizontal cracks on the flue pipe now. I've put a big dent in the pile of firewood here. My plan is to burn this stove until this pile is gone. I may throw some of the stuff that is already got mycelium growing on it. Put that in the mulch pile over there. One of my goals with this was that it would be able to eat full two by fours, which it is doing. One thing that this does not have is continuous cross section. So normally you want the firebox, the fire tunnel, and the riser to all be the same dimension so that the airflow can be as smooth as possible. And my firebox is a little bigger than the chimney dimension. So that's letting a little bit of the fire come out the front. All right, I think this is the hottest it's been. I'm gonna do another check down the riser and see how high the flames are coming. It's 
coming out the top. Woohoo! That's what I'm talking about. This flue pipe is gonna blow. But it served its purpose. I think that's pretty much all there is to see on this video. But remember, I'm going to use these blocks in the next video to do a rehab on my greenhouse. I'm gonna be deconstructing what I've got now and then putting in the adobe block wall. And I'm, I'm guessing I can get three blocks tall. It's just gonna be sort of a foundation wall. And then on top of that, I'm gonna do my tank tube steel structure with a plastic roof. And this time I actually got UV stabilized plastic, so it will last longer than the, the stuff I used last time. As always, thanks to my patrons for helping make these videos possible. If you'd like to support me over on Patreon, you can check the description below. As always, my mission here at Green Shores is to help you see green so you can be green. And save a little green by doing it yourself. Thanks so much for watching. Please like and share. Keep all the great comments and suggestions coming. And tell me how to say hello in your language, and I'll use that in my next video. We'll see you next Saturday.